Hi, welcome to another episode of Design Spark Ask the Expert. Today we're talking with Earth Electronic to talk about uh, connectivity and sensor solutions and smart sensing. And we've got Michael Brower from Worth. Hi, Michael, could you introduce yourself to our viewers, please? Hi, Nick. Yeah, many things. So, as for the my name is uh, Michael Brower. I'm from uh, Wirt Electronic ISOs and I'm heading the R&D department within the division uh, Wireless Connectivity and Sensors. Great. OK, so for wireless connectivity, um, solutions that are often talked about these days. What is the approach that Worth take to solutions for wireless connectivity in general? Yeah, so there is, I would directly start with uh, that what we have uh, mostly in focus, our customers, and uh, they're typically the experts within their application. But their application much more than uh, just sensors or RF uh, modules, so that means this is just a small part of their overall application. Uh, that's for sure, they are not directly the experts within RF design, not the experts within uh, sensors, and uh, that's where we come in the game. So that means here we directly put the focus in assisting our customers exactly with this kind of products. So that means, uh, as an example, we are developing here uh, our completely RF modules, prevent our customers that they have to start with RF right from the scratch, so that means that they have to take care about selecting the chipsets, making the mostly complex RF design, taking about antennas. Uh, all this is done directly by uh, with electronic ISOs and even more, so that means we take already care about certification of these R, uh, RF modules. So that means that here customers have real benefit working co uh, together and they can completely focus on their application. Okay, that's that's interesting. So you, you're taking out quite a lot of the that early development. So you, you're streamlining the the process, and it, it probably looks a little bit more like a, a modular solution where they they don't have to be the expert within that particular one field. They they can then use your products to help their development a lot quicker. That's that's really interesting uh, concept on that. In terms of um, Worth Electronic offering IoT products for Industry 4.0 and, and smart applications. Could you expand on what that is? Is it development and evaluation boards through to end product? Yes, that means um, directly regarding our portfolio, you can see here sensors, RF modules are working very close together. So that means in a typical IoT application, there are the sensors detecting any signals uh, from the outside, from the environmental, uh, and then it's a, a task of the RF module to transmit those information. Here we already take care about that sensors and RF modules uh, work very well together. So that means uh, offering both components for sure we can already evaluate this very close together working. But um, in addition also, it's not just that we like to offer the hardware and uh, mention our customers as well, please connect this pin with that pin. Uh, it's a little bit more. So that means uh, uh, sensors, but also RF modules uh, can't live without any software and even uh, that it's directly software which our customers have to take care about in his uh, application my controller. But um, here we can also again in the game, so that means we take care about uh, so-called software development kit, where they are already prepared C code files that uh, our customer easily can implement in his main core to make it as easy as possible to uh, let the sense of let the RF modules run. Okay. Also, in the um, the industrial world, machine-to-machine -machine, um, communication is really important. What is it that the users would need to consider for machine-to-machine -machine solutions? Yeah, so that means uh, from point of development, for sure, the easiest one is uh, if you have the task to develop a completely production line right from the scratch. But uh, sadly, reality looks completely different, so that means... Uh, most companies just uh, interested in, well, I have already an ex existing production line. How can I increase this uh, productivity, whatever, uh, without uh, the need of uh, replacing all of my machines? So that means here, the uh, uh, keyword directly is retrofit. And uh, mostly at the beginning, it's just an idea. And no one knows directly, well, is the idea working pretty well or not? And here it comes also in the game, so that means uh, with all of our products, we're offering uh, also evaluation boards that gives the possibility for our customers to start directly uh, evaluating their ideas. So that means instead of spending days, uh, months, weeks in making a um, PCB layout, inviting software, they can directly start with our evaluation boards, 
uh, as an example, even with a small evaluation board for isolation sensors, we take care about that this board can be screwed easily on any machines to uh, uh, just collect information about the machine and uh, connect with RF modules, transmit those information that engineers can easily evaluate all the data collected from already existing machines without a need of uh, having a direct influence uh, inside the production line, inside the machine. Yeah, I think you, you, you picked upon retrofit there, which is you know, a, a real opportunity for, for machine to machine. And retrofit really is one of those solutions which will probably deliver high benefits for uh, a, a low cost um, solution. So retrofit for, for, for us as well, we, we're, we're seeing a lot of information about retrofit and existing plant and machinery to make them either incorporate sensor and sensor technology and becoming smarter in, in what they do. So yeah, I think in terms of retrofit, you're definitely uh, you're definitely on the the track there for what what's happening and, and things that we can see as well. But in terms of um, in, incorporating elements within machinery, sensors is a big part of what what needs to happen in the process. Could you expand on the the, the sensors that you guys at Worth are, are offering users? Yeah, for sure. So that means we started in 2018 with our sensor portfolio. And uh, the, the, that time, the starting point was acceleration and pressure sensor. Meanwhile, we are able also to offer uh, humidity sensor and temperature sensor. And we are already still in development to increase here significantly in the near future of portfolio. OK. So what, one of the, the things that I've seen from you guys is the fellowing um, products. Um, and you're talking about Adafruit form factor. Could you just tell me a little bit more? What, what, what is Adafruit form factor? Yeah, so that means once for sure the Adafruit uh, form factor is nothing what uh, was developed uh, within uh, Vid Electronic either for sure. But uh, very simple, we already talked about our portfolio, especially what uh, we're offering from our division wireless connectivity and sensors. So that means we have sensors, we have uh, RF components, but for sure, typical application needs much more. But uh, uh, also, typically, no supplier can offer uh, everything. So that means, uh, for sure, every application today needs my controller, but uh, today is not in our portfolio. So that means if we have here our own form factor with uh, our evaluation boards, then for sure, our customers have to uh, look around how to connect here in my controller. But uh, Adafruit was, uh, uh, has a very interesting idea to make an open, kind of open standard with a feathering form factor where every company can take the same uh, pin layouts, the same pinning, so that uh, uh, makes it easy for customers to uh, take just the right feather wings and put them together. So that means from real side, as mentioned, we can offer those small boards with sensors on top, with RF modules, but also our colleagues from other departments take care about having uh, or offering feather wings uh, for DC-DC converters. Uh, and now the customer just have to think about, well, I also need a microcontroller. He can look around what other microcontroller feather wing boards are on, available on the market. Just take it and uh, place all together as this kind of step and can directly work service. But again, um, it's not just offering the, the hardware, the pure PCB parts, the feather wing with uh, elements, with the components on top. It's also that we offer it in um, uh, together with the feathering form factor, also the software customer needs to uh, have also easy development of the whole system. Okay, so yeah, you, you, you're absolutely helping the, the user in every respect there. In terms of um, offering support, what is it that Worth have additional to the product evaluation? Do you have um, tools, software, and ecosystems that users can get information from or, or help uh, in prototyping with? Yes, yeah, so that means uh, prototyping starts from my point of view also offering uh, uh, the evaluation board, but also the self uh, development kit. But uh, I will mention this is uh, uh, not just enough. We also take care about uh, with graphical user interfaces a GUI to make it as easy as possible for our customers. Meanwhile, the products are very complex. There are also a lot of settings possible in each product. So that means it's not just that you have a lot of different settings possible in RF modules, but meanwhile also uh, within sensors. So that means uh, 
here with this graphical user interface, it makes it very easy for the customers just by having pull down menus, for example, to select directly the right uh, uh, cutoff frequency and filters uh, the right operation mode, like um, I need a very fast data transmission and there is uh, for sure, I have to increase the overall power consumption or I'm in absolutely low power application, I can switch the sensor also in this mode. And uh, instead of uh, study uh, uh, 70 sites of user manuals and knowing exactly which register our customers have to set, it's much easier to have a very well working GUI where they just can put down the menu directly with, I would mention, human eye readable. Well, this setting means exactly that. So it's much easier to read directly. The cutoff frequency is 400 hertz instead of it's uh, the hexadecimal code uh, 3F. Uh, and uh, you first have to, to uh, review in the user manual what does it really mean. Okay. Also, um, can you just expand a little bit more on the uh, wire pass and its advantages as well? Yes, uh, uh, for sure. So, wire pass is one of our newest product. Uh, one has just released a few weeks ago. And uh, here we are working with a Finnish company, Wire Pass, together. So, that means this uh, company developed a software uh, stack which uh, offers directly a mesh, a rooted mesh uh, system. And um, uh, this company, as mentioned, takes care about the software development, the software stack regarding this RF possibilities. Uh, we have the right hardware, so that means uh, it was a very good uh, cooperation here to put our hardware together with their developed software, and uh, we are able to do it directly on our uh, well-proven hardware where we have already Bluetooth module called uh, our Protox module or proprietary uh, protocols like uh, Tiony. Uh, so that means here we take the same hardware, flash the wire pass, software stack on it, and uh, able to offer also our customers here a whole package, again, means uh, software and hardware in combination. Okay. So, yeah, but uh, again, this is not enough. We have also uh, uh, software written here. We call it WirePass Commander. So that means um, customers have here easily the possibility to um, uh, deal with a whole wire pass network. So that means they can directly uh, uh, see which, noted, uh, which nodes already connected in this um, uh, uh, environmental. They can directly read out, for example, if there's a sensor node, the humidity, uh, the temperature, and this is directly shown in our wire pass uh, commander GUI as a kind of flow chart. So that means, again, makes it very easy for the customer also to see directly the information transmitted within this network. Okay, so if if we're thinking back to to application, for example, um, data is is the key. So data from sensors and data from uh, processes, and people are, are looking for for data on the go at the moment. But what what do you see as any challenges for uh, mobile um, data transfer? Yeah, so that means um, uh, the. Models we have today in the in our portfolio focus uh, directly on a local uh, RF uh, network. So there is some um, examples are Bluetooth, are Wi-Fi. So that means typically the customer takes care about uh, a transmitter as well as uh, for the receiver. Uh, this is very well working if you have a, a local uh, area where you need this RF uh, transmission. But for sure, there are a lot of uh, other applications uh, like in the logistics. Uh, like in uh, transportation, uh, agriculture, for example, where it's not possible to have this uh, local RF network. And here comes cellular in the game. So that means um, uh, with cellular and, and especially the protocols like Neuroband IoT and um, LT Cut M, they have two protocols. Uh, with, with it's very interesting for sensor data transmission from everywhere. Uh, without having a local network. And uh, this is something for sure we have also uh, in focus uh, and even more, we already started development here that in the nearest future, we can also offer our customers here cellular connectivity. Okay, so when we're talking about data and, and sending data, one of the things that is obviously prominent in, in people's minds is data protection. So secure, safe data transfer, what is it you need to maybe consider to, to make sure that you're achieving that goal? 
Yeah, so uh, that's a very important point uh, to achieve here, really high security. And uh, uh, if I explain already cellular connectivity uh, or before sensors uh, connected with RF modules, uh, we can see directly there are a lot of components and uh, even not just components, but also a lot of service provider in the game. So that means uh, the sensor are measured by the sensors. Uh, the sensor transmits typically by a wire connection the data to an RF module. The RF module is, for example, uh, uh, sending the information in a local network like wire paths. Then those information are collected uh, by a sink or by, by uh, other devices. Um, and then they are transmitted typically via internet in a cloud. So that means we're talking here about uh, the component supplier. We are talking here about the local network supplier. We are talking here about security in the internet. We are talking here about service provider regarding the cellular connectivity. We are talking about companies taking care about the service for cloud connections. So that means um, there are a lot of uh, uh, steps in between where we have to take care about that the data will secure from, from the beginning to the end. So that means end-to-end -end, um, security is here the key word. And this is exactly also we uh, have in focus. Um, we already testing uh, first systems. So that means that we can directly be sure that during the whole signal path, there is uh, a completely secure data transmission. Okay. So just before we finish, um, we've gone through today uh, quite, quite a few things in, in terms of uh, helping users get up and running with um, sensor and data communication and data transfer. You were talking earlier about some of the products and, and the approach to the technology which are helping users. What is it from Worth Electronic that we could expect to see in, in the future regarding the world of wireless connectivity and sensor development? Yeah, so that means for sure, uh, the first step is also that we will uh, not stick on the roadmap what we have today. So that means uh, for sure we will permanently work on increasing our portfolio with uh, new sensors, with new RF uh, solutions, uh, but for sure we will not stick on that. So that means, um, as already mentioned, uh, uh, we will also go deeper in that area, uh, what to do with the sensors. So that means security, as mentioned uh, before, will be one part uh, of this, but for sure our customers are also not just interested in how to generate the data, it's easy, a sensor can do it, but um, for sure, at the end, uh, someone has also to take care about what to do with the sensor data. And um, here, we like also to be a, a partner for our customers. That means that we already started um, to develop systems like um, what kind of algorithms are needed to uh, uh, directly evaluate out of all the uh, huge amount of data exactly the needed information. So that means this is also uh, often a complex uh, system. So that means generating data is very easy, but to take out the right system, the right information out of uh, this huge data, that is the direct is channels for the future. And this is exactly what we are also have a deeper look already right now to be a part of also in future here for our customers. Yeah, I think we're seeing quite a lot of um, talk around that as well. Is is what data is is good data? What what is the important data to take out? I, I'm pleased to hear that you know you you're saying that that's an area that you're working closely with with customers on. That's that's really good to hear. Um, and Michael, I really appreciate you, you taking the time today to talk to Design Spark, and uh, it's been a great discussion. And I hope we talk again real soon. So thanks for joining the discussion today, Michael. Take care. Many thanks. You're welcome. Take care.